Hello, you are welcome to Fabi Virtual Geospatial. My name is Fabi. Uh, I welcome you to our lecture series. Today, we want to look at um, supervised classification of Landsat images with QGIS. Uh, QGIS is an open source GIS software, and um, I previously we have looked at the advantages and disadvantages of using open source GIS software, call it Force4G, free open source GIS software. Uh, the first step we need to do is to register on the platform where you can download the satellite images that are free, uh, because if you want to use open source software, you may need to also use open source images, open source data sets. Uh, so if you want to download Landsat images, you can go to this uh, website, a USGS website, to download free Landsat images of any date. And if you want to download uh, Asta and Moody's data, you can go to this uh, website, addata.nasa.gov. And if you want to download Sentinel data, you can go to this uh, site. You need to register on those sites and get a username and password. Once you have done that, then you can open GI, QGIS and under the uh, QGIS uh, platform, you can uh, install SCP, which is a semi-automatic classification plugin, under the plugin manage and install plugin section. And after you have uh, downloaded and uh, installed the SCP plugin, then you can download the images you want to download. And after that, you need to provide training data sets for these uh, areas. And once you provide the training data set, you can run classification, either minimum likelihood or maximum likelihood. But you must also be ensure that you are online, that you have the online facility for your, for your data set. So now let, we, are, we go to QGIS now, and under the QGIS, we can uh, click on New. I uh, explained in my previous lectures that under the QGIS, you have different, um, you have, uh, under the QGIS, you have the uh, display platform, you have the browser, you have the layer panel, and uh, you can, uh, uh, you can go to plugin and under the manage and install plugin, you install the you install the SCP. You type in SCP here, and you, you see semi automatic plugin. Because I've already installed, it tells us that uh, whether do I want to upgrade. It asks whether I want to upgrade or I want to install, or I want to reinstall. Because I have already installed, it's already here. Once we install, once we download and install, it will bring it here. We have it here, and you have band set, basic tool, download product, and so on and so forth and so forth. So the next stage after you have downloaded and installed the SCP plugin, the next stage is to download product. Go to the SCP under the sub menus. You put on go on look at download product. Once you say download product, it will give you this window. And under this window, uh, you can uh, you have the login parameters because I've already logged in and I've already uh, specified my username. If you register on for Landsat login under the S3 crusgs.gov then it will ask you to provide the username and password and you can indicate that you want the system to remember your password the same thing for asta or moody's data 
and the same thing for Sentinel data. I already registered for all this and I can download any of the data from the site. So, but because we want to look at the location, when we talk about search, this search is um, the longitude and latitude of where you want to, to, to download images from. And then, if you want to show it on the map, then you need to go back to the map environment and you can open Google Map. I've shown you in my previous images, I have shown you in my previous uh, recordings how you can uh, actually bring in the how you can bring in the how you can bring in the Google Earth map into the into the images. Now I want to download some data in uh, uh, in Ethiopia. I want to download some data in the Romia region of Ethiopia and uh, somewhere in this area. So we go back to the we go back to the area and we say, okay, we want to pick. You click on this plus symbol. And then you can come back to the map environment. You right click, and then you left click. That will show you the area you want to collect data. It will open for you and show you that okay, this area is what you want to download from, and to give you the upper left coordinates coordinate and lower right coordinates they will show you the area you want to download the next thing you need to do is to go to download option under the download option it gives you all the data set that are available and which i can download because there's sentinel 2 bands sentinel 3 band the juice band which are based on my registration in this platform but i don't want data on sentinel for now i don't want data on uh, use for now and then i only want band 2 band 3 and band 4 of landsat so i'm going to close this one that i don't want don't want band 8 i don't want band 9 i don't want band 7 i want band 2 and three and four are uh, based on the it will give me more discrimination of the area then i go back to search option now i want to search landsat data landsat 8 i only want to work on landsat 8 and uh, i want to the date talking about the date to which to look for data so i'm going to pick 2021 2021 um from June, June 9 to December 2021, then December 8, 2021. Then what is the cloud cover percentage? This 100% cloud cover, that means any data set that has more than 10% cloud cover should not be selected. And also the results here, is saying that a maximum of 20 data returns a maximum of 20 data returns then once we are done you click on this search option and when you click on this search option it's going to give you all the available images you have there and it'll give you the parameters of those images uh, we can look at the path the, the path and the row row 167 Part 56, 167, part 55, 168, part 56, and then we have the minimum longitude, minimum latitude. But most important thing that we need to know of this image is the, what is the percentage of cloud cover here. And this one is 2%, this one is 0%. Let's check the one that is 0% to check is actually absolutely no cloud. Let's check this one that is 8%. Uh, this 8%. Uh, let's 
this one is 4 percent so as you can see cloud cover here this one that is 8 percent let's check the percentage cloud cover uh, check this one too this one has a lot of cloud cover so we are going to delete all the one that have eight cloud cover so if you want to delete anyone you delete this delete the row the one that only one that has eight percent you delete them so we now have two and four percent now we want to download this image into a folder we want a process image only we want to load the pan in the QGI so that you can view and you can run. So when you say when you click on run, it will ask you where do you want to put the map. We are going to put it in the Ethiopia, Ethiopia, Ethiopia two, Ethiopia, and then we call it a compiled map. Let's put it in compiled map. So you wait for this, but the, your connection must be very strong. If the connection is, look at it now, you cannot download because my connection is currently weak. Well, I have done it in the other system before, and that's how I was able to download the images. So you go to the, you go to the layer, add layer, and you can go to navigate to where you put the maps. I put the maps in, um, in some images, like an urban, image, an urban data image, and you can see, you can open this image, band one, band two, band one, you click on the control to select the images you want to look at. We have band one, band two, and band three. Uh, band 3, band 1, band 2, which are the, you can click them open, you had them, and uh, you have the maps. You have the maps, the one I uh, have downloaded before, and this one has some percentage of cloud cover, but most essentially, it is the Landsat image for the area. And then, the next stage, after you have downloaded, the map is to Band stacking. Band stacking is to produce a composite of the images so that you can have only one image of different band. So you go to band set to another band set to multi band image list. You click on this and then it will give you all those images on this area, all those images that appear on your Ma, they will now put band one, you select band one, band two, band three, uh, band one, sorry. So that we now have band three, band two, band one space on the on our set. So we want to stack these images together, we want to create a raster band that will be easy, that will be easy to uh, manipulate so that you can have one single image. You click on run, it asks us where do you want to put a map. Let's select the folder, compiled map, compiled map. So select the folder and then you run. Once we are running, you see the map will be semi automatic classification plugin is working and you can see the percentage. I'm going to close this. I'm going to close the uh, video so that I can allow the plugin to finish work before I go to the next stage. Now we finish the uh, the the composite. We now have the image, which is uh, a composite image of the. Of the entire stuff then the next stage is to do the training site we do the training site by going to this you can actually bring in 
the plugin show plugin so that everything can be here, can be on this side on the panel window, and then you can look at the training input. Uh, if you click on the training input, uh, you can create a new training input, or you can open a different training input. So we have the image now. We can create a new uh, training data set. Let's call it new train. And once we click new train, you come to, you start with uh, this. You can start with, uh, let's start with forest. Or let's start with water body as one, call the water body as one. You can zoom to certain areas so that you can capture the water body properly. So you click on this ROI polygon and then you left click, left click. When you are done, you right click and it will give you this and then you come to MC1, you call it uh, water. Under the, under the name, call it water, and then you click save. So the MCID is one, MCID is one. Then you can move again to, it depends on the speed of your system. It will also tell you how you can move. So you, you get this, um, you go to another place uh, where you get water body, water body, and then you come to arrow high, you select arrow high, then you click on water, then you make sure that this ID is also one, you save it. So when you are done, you now combine these two together. So you, you want to match these two and uh, you can have many, you can have many, as many, the more, the merrier, the more, the better. So you can get these two together and then you, you click on match. You want to match a latest signature. So once you match that, when you want to match all your signatures that are underwater, then you can uh delete other ones so that the merge one will be retained so you go then this one now can now select these two and then we delete click on delete this so that we now have one merge water then you can go to urban urban area you call it urban two you call it urban two this is an urban area so you go to this and then you see the ROI. Call it Urban. Urban. Then you call it Two and Two. So you do that also for as many as you want on Urban area. And then you do the same for bear land. You do the same as um, for vegetation and so on and so forth. Let's take another urban land, urban area. Let's look at the uh, area. This is another example of urban. So you click on this. Right click to finish. You call it two. Urban and urban to save it. So once we finish on this, I'm going to load a particular uh, uh, signature we have developed so that uh, we not take time to implement this. Uh, you finish on this, then you merge the two. You match the two, and once you match the two, 
then you when you match the two, then you go to other now you delete the other two. So you now have only one merge or ban. You can see merge or ban, merge water. You can now go to vegetation and do the same. Uh, one other thing we can do, if there are some features that you cannot see properly in the images, then you can use the background Google art image to understand what is in there. Uh, for instance, uh, we can check what we have here. It appear my image. My image is not uh, the internet is very weak now, so you can check this. You can actually use this one as vegetation. So this one is actually vegetation. You can check. You can use this to and use that row high. Set up arrow I call it vegetation vegetation also vegetation and you make it three three you will now have um, different different uh, features then they just use this three to classify it just for just for demonstration purposes uh, Yeah, now we have uh, four classes, this is water, urban, vegetation, and bare land. Once we have this, the next thing that we have marked them, we have different, different uh, uh, features, which we have as a, uh, we can look at them, they are evenly distributed across the across this surface, then you can go back to uh, this and to the SCP, this is true, and then you go to band processing and you click on classification. Under the classification tool, by the time it give you, give you the classification toolbox, then you can, you can now begin now you click on band processing and under the band processing you click on classification under the classification you use the scid to process and then you can select minimum distance or maximum likelihood which is a select minimum distance and then you click on run once you click on run then it will ask you to provide location of the, we call it final ETO. Just give it a name and then it will take some time while it works. I'm going to close the video so that it processes it and then by the time it processes it, I'm going to show you the result so that we can keep the video short. Now, the Process image is, uh, which is a classified image, is now shown, and you can see that uh, it forms, it conforms with the image. You have the uh, this one uh, bare land, and we have the vegetation. You have the water, and so on and so forth. So that is the process of classification using QGIS. What is most important is that the image is free, the process is free, the software is free. Thank you for watching. I Please subscribe to our channel so that when a new video comes, you will be, you will be notified. Thank you. Bye.